Coming with the crowd, let's dance when you neck. And the second ask I have of all of you is to sit down. We're taking the streets and we're sitting down here to make our demands heard. So please, take some space, get comfortable, we're not going anywhere. Everyone in the back, everyone that came here to protest the genocide, I want to see you sit down. Everyone in the very back, I want to see you sit down. I don't want to see anybody standing, guys. Let's go. We're here for a sitting. We're here to make our demands heard. So let's sit down. A little bit of dirt doesn't compare to what's happening to our people. This is a small sacrifice for our people in Gaza. My friends, today, after directing a nine month long campaign of genocide against our people in Gaza, after murdering nearly 189,000 of our people, after being convicted, after being convicted of war crimes in the world's largest court, Benjamin Netanyahu was welcomed into the US Congress with open arms and emphatic applause! Shame! During his long one-hour speech dehumanizing our people, he fabricated stories and retold history using claims of rape and beheaded babies that were debunked by even his own country's news outlets. Shame! Shame! He dehumanized our people in front of the merchants that sell the weapons that finish his job for him. Shame! Shame! Today, Netanyahu made an emphatic plea to the US war machine. He tried to justify the slaughter of 189,000 of our people, saying the forces of, quote, civilization must triumph. Shame! Shame! We must remember that the bombs that fall on our people in Gaza are made in the U.S., are funded by the U.S. The military gear that the IOF wears is funded by U.S. taxpayer dollars. And the companies that make the weapons of mass destruction are based here, in the U.S. and in Canada, in the heart of empire. Netanyahu the commander-in-chief of one of the most destructive bombing campaigns in modern history has been able to blow up and destroy 70% of Gaza's infrastructure only because of the support he receives from Washington. Without the billions of U.S. taxpayer dollars, the unconditional diplomatic support, and the steady shipment of arms from the U.S. manufactured bombs to the, U to the IOF, the genocide of Gaza would never be possible. So when he says that America has Israel's back, he was right. Because when he lied to Congress today, saying Israel didn't kill anyone in Rafah, he said that Israel has been graciously allowing the aid to flow into Gaza, and that he needs more tools to finish the job even quicker. He was met with a standing ovation. Are we going to allow Netanyahu, the butcher of Gaza, get away with these lies? No! Are we going to allow him to disrespect the thousands of martyrs that he has killed with his warplanes and his bombs? No! My friends, as we gather in front of the U.S. consulate today, we must identify that this consulate is a site of U.S. violence. This consulate represents the shared values of Israel and the U.S. that was received with a standing ovation today in Congress. So today, as we take to the streets, we join the thousands and thousands that filled the streets of Washington, D.C. to disrupt Netanyahu's invitation. Today, today in line with the arrest warrants requested by the prosecutors at the International Court of Justice, 
we join the millions of people across the world to demand the arrest of the criminal Benjamin Netanyahu as Israel continues to be isolated globally Netanyahu can no longer hide he will soon be charged with genocide yes. Netanyahu you can't hide Netanyahu you can't hide genocidal maniac Benjamin Netanyahu we demand the arrest of this war criminal. He has been smearing lies at the U.S. Congress today and the American sheep clapping and believing what he said rather than believing their own eyes. Are you ready to have your voices heard by the world? I want to hear the rage and the anger that you have inside. I want to hear resistance in your voices. Free, free Palestine! Free. Benjamin Netanyahu, a war criminal because the U.S. Shame! Because the U.S. and Canada have made this genocide possible. Their investments into weapons manufacturing companies, them sending weapons to Israel, have made the genocide possible, which is why they hosted him and then gave him multiple standing ovations. Shame! We are nine months into a genocide. We know people, our friends, our family, Palestinians in this city who have lost hundreds upon hundreds of family members in Rafah, in Gaza, in Palestine, and war criminal Benjamin Netanyahu is denying this. Shame! Shame. We must continue to amplify the media that is coming out of Gaza from Rafah. We must do our part and continue showing up to actions that put pressure on the state to end complicity in war crimes and in a genocide. It is our responsibility to continue showing up. We now know that it is a lot more than 40,000 people who have been killed by the Israeli state. We know that it is over 180,000 people who have been murdered in Gaza, in Palestine. And our taxes are complicit in their blood, in their murder. Shame! 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 Shame. Justin Trudeau, you will see! Justin Trudeau, you will see! Palace. And we will be reading out a few stories as well in the next few minutes. But of course, we cannot encapsulate the gravity of the situation at hand. 180 plus thousand people have been murdered Shame. in a brutal way, in a violent way. Shame. And we have been showing up month after month, week after week, and the state continues to ignore the people. The US, Canada, the Western imperial world continues to ignore the people. They continue to send weapons. They continue to fund war crimes and we must, must stand up against it. It is not fair to the innocent children who are being murdered, the orphans, the women who are being left without husbands, the husbands who are left being left without children. It is not fair to the Palestinian people if we do not do everything in our power to apply pressure to end complicity in war crimes and in genocide. This is the genocide of Gaza and Rafah and Palestine who have been murdered. But what we can do is continue showing up and continuing to apply pressure at the institutional level, at the state level, at whatever level you can possibly contribute to or show up at. We must continue applying pressure until Palestine is free. In my lifetime, I will see! Genocide, it's almost a year of genocide, of bloodshed! We're at over 100,000 martyrs! Shame! Every day, we will protest in our daily lives by coming here to make sure that we charge people like Netanyahu with genocide. Netanyahu has been platformed 
by the United States government, by Joe Biden, the butcher of Gaza. Shame! Netanyahu, who is single-handedly responsible for the death of 100,000 or more of our people. Shame! Shame! We handed out placards today with martyrs and their stories, please hold them up high. There are 100,000 people with stories. We don't have enough placards to share theirs. But please remember that it's 100,000 or more people, precious people, people with families and loved ones and jobs and lives and hobbies and a desire to live whose lives were taken away from them by force by a genocidal Zionist Entity and occupation. Shame. Shame! How come? How is it allowed? The Netanyahu and Yoav Gallant, who have warrants, warrants for their war crimes outstanding by the ICC, how is it allowed that they are to enter Congress, that they are to roam the world free? Shame! 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 We want you all to channel the anger, the righteous anger that we all feel in this moment today, hearing Netanyahu speak today to the American Congress after he was invited by both sides of the aisle, both parties to speak was crazy. Shame! We live in an insane moment where this is allowed, where this is possible, but what's good is that now, in this moment, we are the closest we have ever been to liberation. We have never been this close to liberation. And we know, and we will make it happen, and we are certain that liberation is going to happen within our lifetime. No matter how tough the situation gets, no matter how hard it is to read the news, to hear news about your family members, about people you know, about friends, about strangers whose lives are being impacted or taken by the occupation. Please remember that they are doing this for a reason because we are close. We are so, so close to liberation. We have a few more speakers for you today, but before that, I want us to try a new chant in Arabic. I'm going to say something and you guys will respond with Amrika Rasil Irhab. Let's try it. I'm gonna read is for Rifat Al Arir, born on September 23rd, 1979, and, and Israel took his life on December 6th, 2023. He was a Palestinian writer, poet, professor, and activist from Gaza. Al Arir was born in Gaza City and during the Israeli occupation, which he said had negatively influenced every move and decision he made. Al Arir earned a BA in English in 2001 from the Islamic University of Gaza and his master's from University College London in 2007. He earned a PhD in English Literature from Malaysia in 2017 with a dissertation on John Don. He taught literature and creative writing at the Islamic University of Gaza and co-founded the organization We Are Not Numbers, which matched experienced authors with young writers in Gaza and promoted the power of storytelling as a means of Palestinian resistance against the occupation. On December 6, 2023, Al-Arir was killed in an Israeli airstrike in northern Gaza. Shame. 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 Along with his brother, brother's son, sister, and her three children. Shame. 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 Euromed Monitor said that he was targeted, surgically targeted and bombed out of the entire building after a few weeks of death and continuous death threats that Rifat received online and over the phone. Shame. Shame. My second murder story is Dr. Hammam Mahmoud Hussain Alloh. 
Dr. Hammam al was a doctor specializing in kidney transplantation, a rare specialty in the hospitals of Gaza. He worked as a consultant in kidney diseases and transplantation after completing his studies in Yemen and Jordan. He refused, he refused to leave Gaza and was determined to serve its people. In his last interview at the Shifa Hospital, when asked by, the, by, the, by an interviewer why he didn't leave, his response reflected the greatness of the entirety of Gaza and its people. He said, I studied medicine for 14 years. I studied medicine for 14 years, not for myself, but for my patients. I did that so that I, I can stay with them. And if I leave, who will treat them? Dr. Hammam, Dr. Hammam was murdered in a Zionist airstrike that targeted the courtyard of the Shifa Hospital. Of the Shifa Hospital, one of the many times they, tar they targeted the hospital. While he was fulfilling his religious, ethical, and national duty to the Palestinian people on November 11th, 2023. Shame! 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 My third murder story is Batul Muhammad Al Hassani. Batul is an eight year old child who loved life and had many dreams. She adored her pets and enjoyed drawing. Mo moments before her martyrdom, she was playing with her sister and cousins, and Batul narrowly escaped death after an Israeli airstrike hit their home in the Shalta refugee camp. She was rescued that time from under the rubble by her father, but then she was murdered in another Israeli airstrike on the home where her family sought refuge for safety in the Qarara area. In the midst of Gaza on October 25th, 2023. Shame! 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 And then we're going to continue with the martyr stories afterwards. But before we do that, we're going to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Muhammad Razwan Mehennis, doctor based out of Toronto, Canada, who practices in regenerative pain medicine and urgent care. Ambassador with humanity, exilum, Dr. Mehennis had the unique privilege of witnessing firsthand the devastation in Gaza during a severe humanitarian crisis, working tirelessly in a makeshift ER. He was confronted daily with the overwhelming challenges of inadequate supplies and infrastructural damage. His plan is to go back to Gaza in future missions and create awareness for Palestinian justice. Please welcome him, please. Good evening, guys. Um, I just came uh, from my work, so I'm gonna make this short because you guys have seen everything. I'm not a Palestinian. I'm not an Arab. I am a human being and I'm a father of three children. As a medical doctor with Humanity Auxilium, I did have the privilege to go down to Gaza and work in the emergency room department over there. I worked there for about two to three weeks. And my question is, what more is there need to be said? What have we not seen enough of? Children with blood-soaked blood shoes. Shame. Have you not heard enough? The cries of parents echoing in fear and pain, losing their only child. Shame. These images haunt us, and their voices should compel us to act. I wait, when I was there in the emergency room, you see what the population is. The population is 60% 60 kids and women. That's what you see in the emergency room. Shame. 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 From starvation, due to lack of medication, people are going through heart attacks because they don't have their diabetic medications. Shame. 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 
and believe it or not, to gunshot wounds deliberately targeted on children's limbs. Not one, not two, 20 and thousands of times. I am not seeing these images online. I actually don't go online to check. I've seen this firsthand. The top UN court just declared Israel's presence in the occupied Palestinian territories illegal. So it is illegal. Let's not sugarcoat this. Let's be honest. There's no need to make a political statement. This is a genocide against the Palestinian population. In the hands of not only Israel, but the USA. I have, I am not hiding my words, they are the real terrorists. They are the real terrorists justifying the killing of innocent children and then celebrating on their graves. I'm not here, I'm here to tell you all to take action because inaction is also complicity. Boycott products as much as you can. Educate others. Educational education is important. And pray for the people in Palestine. They are also human beings deserving of peace, dignity, and a future free of fear. We cannot turn a blind eye. Long live Palestine. I'm having to come out every single weekend asking for the same demands over and over again. All these politicians, all they care about is money, power, and influence. We have to make it known, we have to make it heard. The power of the people that are here right now, this is what counts. Look around you. This is history being made right here in downtown Toronto. All of you are part of it. The siege on Gaza! As he tried to justify the genocide committed by his cowardly army in Gaza. Shame! 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 This war criminal attempted to invoke the Holocaust to justify his crimes in a very transparent attempt to use the victim narrative to justify the crimes in Gaza. Shame! 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 There will be no new Gaza, as this coward said. All of the free people of the world know that Gaza will remain an integral and inseparable part of, the, of Palestine. The legendary steadfastness of our people and the power of Palestine is the power of the children, the power of the stones, the power of the men that fight tanks with conviction. The women that remain steadfast in the prisons, the power of our brave, oppressed people is not in their ability to liberate, is in their, is in their ability to liberate and open the eyes of the entire world to the reality. The reality that we live in a world where the political class, where Trump, Biden, Kamala Harris, Justin Trudeau, Belinda Joy, their only loyalty is to money. They absolutely do not have our best interest in mind. They don't have the oppressed people, the innocent people interest in mind. They have their personal interests, the interests of those who are already, are already rich and powerful in mind. For them, it doesn't matter that 45,000 people have been brutally killed. Even if it means Israel can continue to exist, if it means that Israel, Israel can continue to make billions in profits every year, for shame! 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 I think we're just getting them lined up. But I propose to take a few minutes just to think about what every single martyred life means. Every life lost is a story. Every life lost is aspirations, dreams that people have ripped away from them in a way that is so
so incredibly unjust in a way that is fueled and maintained by our complicity. We must humanize every innocent Palestinian who was martyred, who are continuing to be murdered by the Israeli genocidal state. We must do our part to not forget them, to say their names, to bring them up, especially given that we are living in the imperial core. Our taxes, our tuition dollars, everything that we do is somehow complicit in the genocide and the murder of innocent Palestinians. And shame! So continue to show up, continue to speak out and to take charge, to push your places of work, the places you study, the places you go to earn money, to do the right thing, to support Palestinians in our communities who are grieving the loss of land, the loss of loved ones, of family, of friends, but beyond that, to make sure that our tuition dollars are not complicit, our jobs, our, our taxes are not complicit in the genocide and murder of innocent Palestinians. And with that, we will be reading a few of our martyr stories. Our next is Fatima. He's a martyr journalist and worked as a car correspondent for the Cairo News Channel. He used to embrace children at the Shifa Hospital to reassure them and try to ease their fear due to the Israeli bombardment. He was a kind-hearted, gentle, and loved man by all his co colleagues. In every gathering of friends, he was present, and when absent, everyone asked about him. Ahmed was martyred in an Israeli bombardment while covering the news at the entrance of a Shifa hospital on November 14th, 2023. Shame. Shame! Let us remember his name, Ahmed Fatima, a dedicated journalist who lost his life while courageously documenting the harsh realities faced by the people of Gaza. Misk and Nakib, she was a year and a half. A year and a half. At only a year and a half, she was described as very smart, being able to count till 10 in Arabic and English. On October 22nd, 2023, the house of her relatives where she was already taking refuge in was bombed. And all, shame. shame! And all her uncles and cousins were martyred. Misk was going to be a big sister. Her, mo her mother was eight months pregnant with her baby brother. Misk and her pregnant mother went to live in her grandfather's home near the hospital. And on December 2nd, 2023, Israeli occupation forces bombed the house. And both Misk and her mother and her unborn brother were martyred. Shay! Khalid and Salah Hassan Jadallah. Khalid and Salah were 27 year old twins who loved each other and were as close as friends as anyone can ever be close to their twin and their best friend. They did almost everything together. They used to work out in the gym together and enjoyed arguing with each other and others that went to the gym. And they argued about who had more muscles, saying, wait until summer and you'll see our muscles. Khaled and Saleh tried to migrate once. They went to Turkey, but were unable to stay there as they, and then they returned to continue their work their search for work in Gaza without any success until they were ambushed by an occupation aircraft along with their family at their home on October 11th, 2023. Shame. 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 Samir Abu Dakka. Samir Abu Dakka was a Belgian Palestinian journalist for Al Jazeera. Samir hadn't seen his family for four years. Al Jazeera even offered Samir at the beginning 
of this genocide to go and report from Belgium, but he refused. He wanted to remain in Gaza and report on the atrocities that are taking place on the ground. He was martyred by being targeted. He wasn't just randomly martyred. He was targeted by the Israeli drone in Khan Yunus. Shame! He was already covering another massacre when he, when he became the massacre. He bled for five hours. For five hours, the, the paramedics could have saved Samir's life, but the Israeli forces did not allow anyone to get to him. Shame! Shame! Not only was he murdered at the young age of 45, but he was left to bleed to death for five hours. Shame! Yamin al Qatrawi. He was the firstborn son to his parents through a cesarean C section, through a cesarean section due to pregnancy complications. It was likely that neither of them would survive the operation. Yet, to his mother's joy, he brought so much love and happiness to her life that she forgot all the pain and difficulties that she went through throughout her pregnancy when she saw him and she held, her, held him in her, in her arms. He loved cake and celebrated every birthday with his favorite food. He always helped his mother in making that favorite food and his mother always described him as Yemen, the sweet, fair-skinned, yellow hair, blue eyes and small nose and most loving heart. She was always delighted to see him grow before her eyes as if she was saying to people, have you seen this handsome boy? He's my son. Yemen lost contact with his siblings on December 13th and it was discovered 50, 50 days later that his house has been demolished over their heads. 50 days under the rubble, shame! His mother couldn't bid him farewell, nor embrace his body for the last time as he remained buried under the rubble of the house. Shame! Shame! Shame. Rasmiya Naim. Our precious Rasmiya, older than the fake state of Israel, she aspired to see her homeland free. Rasmiya, or also known as Imauni, was born in 1937 in Beit Hanun in Gaza. Rasmiya had seven sons and three daughters. She didn't know how to read, but that did not stop her from being a great example of ambition, patience, and love and perseverance to all her children during their education journeys, as she always encouraged them and push them to continue and to get the highest level of degrees where all her children became teachers and doctors and engineers. Rasmiya planted the love of the homeland in her children's hearts as she taught them about Palestine and how connected they are to their roots. And she planted the love of the Creator in the hearts as Rasmiya has always been an inspiration and source of wisdom to them. On January 6th, 2024, we lost Rasmiya because Israel murdered her. Shame. 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 Israel murdered her, but she was a martyr. And she was murdered after the Iowa specifically targeted that family house in Deir el Balah, again, where they were seeking refuge. Shame. Shame. Mu'ayyin Samir al-Sawafiri. My dear child resided in Saudi Arabia. He then decided to go to Gaza to continue his studies in engineering, majoring in artificial intelligence. He had dreams and aspirations of completing his university studies and eventually got married in Gaza. He was cheerful, loved good for everyone and had a strong passion for drawing and appreciated everything beautiful and elegant. On December 2nd, as soon as he entered the house, 
a missile struck Marine, resulting in his death along with 27 other family members. Shame! My son Mu'in is not just a number, he had dreams and he had aspirations like any other young person. That was Mu'in's mother, Rana As-Sawafiri. She tells us about how the 20-year-old young man back then made this courageous decision to travel and move back to Gaza to pursue his studies despite leaving the, the comfort and not being in a, in a besieged strip, he decided to go back to his homeland and remain there throughout this entire genocide until he was martyred. Ula Muqbil. Ula was a 26-year-old young woman. She was a civil engineer, and everyone acknowledges her intelligence and her sharpness especially her colleagues at the university. She loved knowledge and constantly strived to improve herself. She miraculously survived after the occupation bombed their house on October 8, 2023. However, on March 18, 2024, so after almost more than five months of surviving that genocide, the occupation targeted her family's five-story house, reducing it to rubble. Shame! Shame! Shame. Ula wasn't murdered alone. She was murdered with her family members, except her sister and her younger brothers, who are now left to fend for themselves. Shame! Shame! Hamza at dahduh Hamza was the eldest son of Al Jazeera Gaza's bureau chief, Wa'il al Dahduh, and he worked as a freelance journalist, just like his father. His mother and brother were martyred at the beginning of this genocide in Gaza, and all his writings were about losing his mother and his siblings and how much he longed for them. On January 7th, 2024, Hamza was murdered in a car bombing, also targeted, along with Mustafa Thiraya. Shame. 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 Shame! The car was targeted, and the, as they were trying to interview civilians displaced by a bunch of other massacres and bombings that took place that morning. Wa'il al Hamza's father, described Hamza as he was everything to me the eldest boy, the soul of my soul. These are the, to the tears of parting and loss. These are the tears of humanity. Dana Sokka and Tawfi al farra Dana, a person with a very sweet soul who loved everyone and was the kindest. Dana and her husband Tawfi had been married for only four months when she discovered that she was pregnant with their first child. And she used to say, imagine, I'm going to become a mom. Tawfi al farra her husband, was a dentist. Tawfi was a gentle doctor who always comforted everyone around him until his last breath, making everyone laugh so that, we wouldn't, so that they wouldn't feel the pain. Dana, only at 23 years old, was martyred due to the targeting of their home in Khan Yunus by an Israeli aircraft on October 25th. Shame. Shame. She and her husband Tawfi and Tawfi's sisters, Reem al farra and Hal al farra and their unborn baby, along with many family members who were in that house, were martyred. Shame. 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 Marwan Asawaf. Marwan worked as a sound technician in production companies and was an independent photographer in Gaza. He and his brother Muntasar survived an, air, an airstrike on their home in November, but their father 47, and 47 family members lost their lives that day. Shame. Shame. Shame! They managed to survive and to keep pulling through. However, the occupation, insisting on annihilating everything and everyone in Gaza, killed and murdered Marwan and his brother 
by an Israeli airstrike on December 1st, 2023. Imam Muhammad Abu Sakhil. Imam Muhammad's dream was to celebrate her eldest son's wedding, which was scheduled for November 23rd, 2023. She longed for the joy she'd experience when her son, whom she watched grow up, reached the age of marriage, and she said, Finally, I will rejoice in him. Can it be true? I will celebrate with Muhammad. My heart feels the beauty of not missing out on his wedding, but there is a lump in my heart preventing me from fully rejoicing. May God bless me with the happiness and grant me the opportunity, opportunity to have a wonderful wedding, inviting everyone and celebrating with seven nights of henna. Henna is a pre-wedding party. This is the joy I have been waiting for my whole life. However, when the, bro when the, war, bro when the war broke out, she said, it's over, there will be no wedding, there will be no joy. How can we celebrate when people are sad and broken? and there are so many martyrs. She did not know that she would become a martyr herself. She waited her whole life for Muhammad to grow up, and when he finally did, and his wedding day approached, the occupation forces launched a missile on her street. She was among the victims, and her dreams vanished along with her. Shame! Imam Muhammad was martyred in Gaza on November 5th, 2023. Our mother was taken away from us and all the joys of the world were lost, not only the joy of Muhammad's wedding, one of her kids mentioned. Dr. Muhammad Zahir al Nuno, pharmacist Dr. Muhammad, was the head of the pharmacy department at a Shifa medical complex before the start of the genocide. During Israel's raid of Shifa, Dr. Muhammad refused to leave the hospital or abandon his patients, and he insisted, he insisted on continuing to treat the wounded. He was executed. Shame. He was executed by the Israeli forces in front of his patients. Shame. Hind Rajab. We all know Hind. We all know Hind Rajab's story. A six-year-old that was murdered by the Zionist entity on January 29th, 2024. I'm so scared. Please come. Come take me. Please, will you come? Hind begged. Hind begged rescue workers to come save her for three hours. Imagine a six-year-old begging for three hours and no one being able to respond to those cries. Shame! Hind was begging because her family car came under tank fire. So the Israeli occupation forces were so freaking close. They were so close, yet they left her while listening to her screams. She was stranded inside that car along with dead relatives. Shame! At that time, Hind was the sole survivor. In that car were her family members and she was there crying alone. Yusuf Zeno and Ahmed Al Madhun, working for the Palestine Red Crescent Society, tried to reach Hind. They tried really hard, however, they were murdered by the same tanks and the same occupation forces genociding everyone in Gaza. Shame! In addition to all of Hind's family, Hind and Hind, Yusuf and Ahmed were deliberately targeted and murdered by the Israeli forces as they went to evacuate Hind. Shame! Haytham Sharif Harara Haytham was murdered on November 3rd in the attack of a Shifa hospital along with close to 100 other casualties. Haytham was a journalist and in the first month of the genocide he was working around the clock 
under the worst circumstances possible and at a great personal cost. He was working around the clock to tell the story of Gaza and its people. He sent updates regularly and maintains his professionalism and positive outlook through the most difficult days. His last, word, his last words on a Facebook post on October 13th were, we will not leave, we will not go out, and you will only see steadfastness and certainty from us. And if there is to be an exodus, it will either be to our occupied lands or to heavens. Ayat Faraone. Ayat was 17 days old. 17 days old when the Zionist entity brutally targeted her family home on October 15th. Shame! It resulted in her martyrdom along with her entire family, massacred before her birth certificate was even issued. Shame! Tala Abu Muammar. Tala was a child who had been living with her family in Egypt for the past four years. In July 2023, she traveled to Gaza while her father resided in Saudi Arabia after completing his medical specialization in Egypt. They attempted various ways to leave and be re reunited with her dad, but without a success. Tala's last words were, I'm done, Mama. I don't want to go to Baba's place. I just want to be a martyr so I can become a bird in paradise. She was killed by the occupation on December 20th, 2020, 2023. Shame! Tala's dream was to become a doctor just like her father, but that was never fulfilled. And for the last martyr story, but as we all know, there are literally thousands and thousands more, we have Erij Sakik. She's a mother and a wife. Her husband, Muhammad, spent 17 years full of love with her. They had two daughters and a son. She always cared for her home and children, encouraging them to study, strive, and rely on themselves. She loved her husband and always sought to make her entire family happy. The last thing Erij said to her husband is, is your love pure for me? Muhammad got upset and she replied, may evil be very far away. God willing, we will be together, all of us, so that no one's upset with another. Erij was martyred along with her family, except for her husband on November 13th, due to the Israeli occupation. Shame! Shame! Shahid Niyalek! Yaret Ibni Badalek! Move your legs, move your arms. We're not leaving just yet. We're just making sure we're healthy. Shake your legs. And repeat after me. I, I am a revolutionary. Sometimes, but remember the revolution might go down or up, but never stop. And if we look around, we might miss some people that are not here, but remember that we are here. It's never been about numbers. It's never been about how many people stand with rights. It's about where you stand. The revolution started with a few people. It continued for the last hundred years. And here we are. Tell them from the river to the sea. After hundred years, we still, we consist to continue until full liberation from the river to the sea. We stand here, few meters away from the head of the tourists in the world. And in front, of the American consulate, it's not the NBC, but one day we will reach the NBC to tell them we will free Palestine from the river to the sea and we will return. And when we talk about returning, we are talking about Anaraja Araja. Anaraja Araja. Anaraja Araja.
So when he talked about uh, Al Quds, you know, they were clapping and they thought it's their capital. But we know, we know, we will, we know, we will get it back soon. And we know it's a matter of time only. We might look and see the world stand with them, but we have something bigger than the world. We have Allah with us and our faith that we are standing on the right side of history and in the right side of the human right. And as a Palestinian and as a refugee, as someone who grew up in a refugee camp and my family still live in this refugee camp I just, I can't stop until we get it back and when I look at my friends and my people in Gaza I just, I can't stop until we get it back and when I look at your faces here I just say, we can't stop until we get it back. And when we talk about get it back, we need it from the river to the sea. But in Tifada, after 10 months, we stand in front of those criminals and we call for the Intifada. We should be proud of ourselves. They try to stop us from saying from the river to the sea because they don't know we will free it from the river to the sea. <laughs> After they hated that, we told them, okay, we will go from the river to the sea, then we will come back from the sea to the river to make sure it is free. From the sea to the river! Again, and as I miss this chant, Jannah, Jannah, Jannah. If you don't remember, or if you remember it. So when I say, you, you clap two times, okay? We don't have drummers, I do believe we have one drum. Should be enough. Okay. War criminal Benjamin Netanyahu said we don't know our history but he doesn't know it yet he'll be part of our history we are the history we are the present and we are the future he said we don't know our geography we don't know which river to which sea so let's make it really clear for him from Taba the Egyptian town bordering the south of Palestine to Marwahin, the Lebanese town bordering the north of Palestine that's being bombarded for nine months will say from Taba to Marwahin. I'm just gonna say a quick word. Next Thursday on August 1st will mark 300 days of genocide. 300 days of daily massacres. Of our people being slaughtered. Of, of parents finding their children in pieces. Of children being orphaned. Of our people being tortured. 300 days of genocide. And 300 days of us keeping going. Of us protesting of us standing against genocide. But we all have seen that recently our numbers have dwindled. We all need to feel the responsibility to keep showing up, to keep fighting for our people, to keep fighting for humanity, to keep fighting for justice. This is a responsibility on all of us here. This is a responsibility to keep showing up, 
to bring more people out to, to these rallies and actions, to get more organized, and to free Palestine. Because Palestine is ours. So we ask you to be to join any organization. I uh, us as BYM, we have weekly volunteer meetings to join your neighbor groups to keep to keep talking about Palestine. You don't need to work every day for Palestine, but you need to spend as much time as you can because people are being slaughtered. And this is, a, again, I'm going to keep mentioning it. It's a collector, collector responsibility. We show, we show up to actions because we want our voices to be heard. But we want our voices to be heard as one because this is our strength. Our strength all united together. And we're probably going to have more actions again next week. We're gonna have to. We're gonna keep the fight going. So we ask all of you to keep showing up. We ask all of you to help in organizing the movement for Palestine until its liberation, until the U.S. is defeated, until Israel is defeated, until imperialism is defeated. And we're gonna end the strong now with a couple of chants. So we need everyone's voices to be as loud as possible, all as one. Free, free,